and they just squeezes them too hard. And then they both go over each other. Tons of flipping <laughs> nonsense that happened there. That was crazy. Oh, no. Oh, and then he hits another guy and another guy and another guy. Oh, that's that's the big one. They're still having an accident. <laughs> They're still having an accident. Just losing the back end, letting it come around. Oh, 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 my God. That was, oh, man. <laughs> Kuba, this is going to be good. Formula F4, that's the Kuba. 21 racers. This is going to be a tight, tight battle. We start in the top 10. Let's see how far I can make my way through the field. Subscribe if you're new. Throw me a like if you got a second. And without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, here we go. Been practicing my starts a little bit more. The F4 doesn't start like some of the other stuff. Gotta have the revs a little bit lower. We get an excellent start. Not as good as the guy behind, but still pretty good. Now, this first corner, I decide to take quite wide. I don't want to be in the mix going through the apex. Doesn't matter. Car's super heavy. You can see some nonsense happening behind us. I can hear it, I can hear it in my headphones. It was so loud. Uh, now, we're not super good. We made up a few places here. We're up to fifth. I lock up with the tires, and the guy behind me just gets real close. He bumps me here, and he goes off, and I get a 4X. Not so great. And then in through here, I got the guy on the outside, and the guy behind me ends up hitting me. Just a little bit. No damage, though. So we're all good. You can see way up ahead, we had a lock up up there. People going into this hairpin the first time, also locking up. So ninth to seventh, that's a pretty good start. We're going to keep trying to push our way through. It seems as though my practice in the Super Formula Lights has improved my game in the open wheeled. And we're able to actually make our way through in this strength of field. Now it is still quite low, 1.1. My uh, strength of my field. Get the guy go off. Oh, so so rough there. He didn't need to do that. So my strength of field is actually 1.28 or something like that. I can't remember, but uh, doing really well right now, up into fifth. So that's a little bit of carnage. I find Sibuka has. A bit of carnage, but not always the worst in the world. It is kind of slow, so you can only get into so much trouble. Although, if you look at the pits right now, it is full of people. I think we lucked out a little bit at the start as well, because we had quite a few people behind that didn't qualify. I qualified, and okay, I think everybody to 15th qualified, so it was okay, not great. <clears throat> in the mix, that's for sure. Now around here, a really good lap is 53s. I'm sure 52s are possible in the F4, but not for me. But some of the higher strength of field guys could definitely do it. But we're looking for the same thing we looked last week. We were looking for deltas. We want our average lap time to be very, very close to our best lap time. And what that essentially means is that, again, as long as you're pushing every lap and you're actually giving it your all, you should get really close. The closer those things are, the closer you are to being consistent. You want all your laps to be really good, not just a few of them here and there. And I think that's what's been hurting me for a long time, is that, yeah, I can put in laps that are almost competitive, but I can only do it once. So, so first thing off, we want to save tires. I am not pushing here. I am trying to hit 54s, low 54s, until a lap, about lap five or six, Again, these F4 tires, they get heat really quick, and you'll notice that you're able to keep it in, but you'll get a lot of rear sliding. And what that is, is that it's a little harder to get temperature into your rear tires, especially I have a lot of uh, brake bias towards the front. I think I'm nearly 60%. So what we really want to do around here is wait for those bulk temperatures to come up. When the whole tire is heated up, it's not just the surface where you're, you're going to get a lot of stuff. If you're following really close behind people early on in the race, you'll see lots of marbles flying off the tires. That's a pretty good sign that whoever's in front of you is cooking through their uh, tire life. So we want to save them. we got a lot of laps around here, probably 22 or so. So we want to save those for later on in the race. And spoiler alert, we do save them. I'm getting better. A little bit better at saving those tires. So we can see uh, first is not taken off. Nobody is really putting in respectable laps just yet. 54 is really kind of the fastest time. 
Again, it sounds like lap five is a long time, but these are only 53 second laps, 54 second laps, so <clears throat> two laps is really one in other places. So you can see up front of us here, we have uh, the guy in yellow is a bit out of place, it feels, and the guy in white just ahead of me, same thing. The other thing you really have to worry about Tsubuga is um, Tsukuba, I always want to say it backwards. Um, is your shifts. Uh, the gear ratios in F4 are very, very short, even shorter than Super Formula Lights, or even some of, like, I think the only thing I can think of that's even less. You can see a lot of, a lot of, uh, understeer there. The only thing I can think of that has shorter gears is the Clio. Um, so you don't want to be hitting the rev limiter. It's really, there's, you gotta eke everything out here, so, and I often come to Cuba. It's one of my favorite tracks, and I think it was the first track I ever drove on in iRacing. <clears throat> so, okay, coming up lap six. Tires are starting to feel good. It's right uh, on this next lap is where I start uh, trail braking and, and really, really hammering on the brakes. I also oscillate the brakes a little bit, too, um, trying to feel in where that, uh, where that slippage is. You can lock up a tire a little bit, but as, lo as long as you don't let it sit there locked up, you're okay. So let's take a lap around Sakuba. So first one here, as soon as it goes out of screen, the little blue on the left, you start turning in. Trail brake late. As soon as you're done braking, way back on the power, let it run wide. Up into third, fourth, fifth, juke, le a juke right, then juke left. Depending on how you do, that wasn't such a good corner. Depending on how you will do it there, you can keep it in second or go into first. Keeping into third here, back on the power. Let it wash wide, get ready to straighten it out for this corner. Break just before the end of the green, and down into second. Try to hit that curb on the inside and power early, early, early. Back up, hit your pips. Right on the mark, don't let it hit that little... The, uh, the F4 makes an awful noise. Break just before this blue. Let it run a little bit wide out, and then back on the power. If you did it right, you don't have to take the gas off, but I got it a little bit wrong. The earlier you go on the power there, the worse it is, because you'll end up having to take the power off just as you're going on the straight. It pays to wait a little bit. <clears throat> so again, just fighting our way through. Um, we are losing the two guys in front a little bit. And then we've lost P6 behind us by a lot as well. So just uh, in the middle of a of a weird phase here, that last lap wasn't all that great. 55 seconds. We did have a few little mess ups though. And now we get lap traffic. Lap traffic is a big thing around Sakua. It is hard to get around lap traffic. There's not really a lot of places for them to let you buy. There's that straight if they're really nice, but generally they don't want to do that because they'll lose speed. They can let you through up here as well. And then sometimes people will let you through on turn eight. They'll go around really far around the outside. So people sometimes duck on the inside here to let through, and he does. I say thank you in the race. So we're just pushing through, trying to catch Antonio and Benjamin. That was a good corner there. Again, still not popping in the good times yet. I did not take any practice for this, just the allotted, I think it might have been 20 minutes or so. The only other thing to note is everybody's ping was insane. I was seeing everywhere from 200 to 1700. In fact, if you watch the rear view camera, people pop in and out as we're driving around later on in the race. So we get this corner a little bit better there. You can see I was a little bit later on the gas, and then I was able to almost keep it fully in through. 54.6, not too bad. There are multiple lines through turn one. Some are fast, some are slow, uh, but it's not always the same. Ooh, big lock up there. I don't like to go into first there. Uh, we get a guy doing <laughs> the 80s spin on your top thing there. Check this out. That was kind of scary. It was, it was just back markers, so no big deal there. 
Uh, but I think Antonio got the worst of that bunt clenching moment, whereas I only got a little bit. It's funny, uh, in the replay, that looked a lot different. In live, he was actually bouncing like Mario, kind of on top of his head. So Antonio had a bad lap there. Let's see what it was. 56. And I had also 56. So we both had 56s. A little lock up again. Again, really, I'm pushing, but not so hard as to try to not ruin the tires. We're still really only kind of about halfway through this race right now. So good in through there. Again, he's still only about two seconds up there. He's pushing to catch Benjamin. I'm pushing to catch him. We really have to be on it to get good around this track. So again, he leaves us a little bit. We're catching him in places, and we're losing him in places. Sometimes quite typical of my experience in F4. This is a good one. There we go. Oh, no. I have to let off the gas a little bit. Just a little bit. 54s. You can see he has a little mess up there. I think he got loose a little bit. Now he's within distance. 1.3. There is almost no draft here, so you don't you can't really rely on that. You just have to be really consistent. Now again, he gets a little lock up. So he had a little lock up before, and I think he got a flat spot, and that made him have another little lock up, and we got by. So Antonio is now 0.6 behind us. So it's at this point I kind of really decide that I'm I'm gonna start pushing super hard. A lot later on the brakes there. You can see where those crossovers of brakes to gas is. We get it perfect there. So we gain, I would say, probably about four tenths on Antonio there. I think he's still suffering with some of his tire damage from the last lap. That's a good one. A little bit later on the gas, and it actually saves you a lot. Tons faster through there. So we had a 54.7, and he had a 58. Ugh, lost four seconds he did all in one lap. So I am very strong early on in the lap, and then I fall down in the last two corners, the hairpin and the long turn nine. So most of these laps on my heads up were coming up in 53s, sometimes even low 53s, uh, but I usually just get this last corner wrong. It is quite difficult. That one wasn't so bad, but I'm not hitting the apex, which means if you don't hit the apex right near the bottom of the apex, it really rotates the car and you can get super early on the gas, if you're brave enough. The back end does like to come out. Although none of the brakes for me because of my front bias is so heavy. We gained four tenths on Benjamin there. In slow, fast out. That's what they always say. Almost down to under two seconds now. Not many laps left, though. So what I usually do as a driver is back off the last couple laps, especially if I know I have gap behind me and they're not going to be able to get by. Uh, but not doing this this time. I'm pushing as hard as I can. As you can see, me locking up. He also locked up again. So we're matching each other's mistakes like for like now. And point nine, going into the final corner. Okay, driving through there. Have to have to pause on that gas again because the back end was screaming at me, and I missed it. Upshift there. My wheel is still not fixed. I think I'm just getting used to it being shitty now, though, which is not something you should be saying about a $500 racing wheel and pedal set. But that's where we are. I got the print better. I reprinted uh, the inside mechanics of it twice now. And this one's a little bit better. I adjusted some angles. So 1.7 to Benjamin ahead of us now. I believe this is the last lap. Oh, tire screaming at me. 1.4. Pretty close, though. Is that it? Yes, that's it. Real close, though. Fourth place? Not bad. That's the second time we've done really well in Formula 4. So let's take some a look at some of the carnage. I want to see that guy on his roof. Okay, here we are the start. 
We'll watch this nonsense coming into the first corner. So we get some guys here, and they just squeezes them too hard. And then they both go over each other. Tons of flipping <laughs> nonsense that happened there. That was crazy. Oh, no. Oh, and then he hits another guy, and another guy, and another guy. Oh, that's, that's the big one. They're still having an accident. <laughs> They're still having an accident. I cannot believe that. That's the most accidents. Okay, we get the touch here that uh, he had on us. I'm surprised that he got such good drive out of there. I backed off to let this guy go through, and then he ends up coming up on my back wing. Now, if you watch closely here, these both of these black guys are okay. They're not super duper fast, but you can see the huge lockup he has here. And then that kind of clears me off. All the guys in the pits. <laughs> Okay, last corner, just running wide, dipping his foot onto the gravel, and done. I will say, Scuba, the walls are very close at all times. It is Formula 4, though, so you do get a fast repair. Just losing the back end, letting it come around. Oh, oh, oh my god. That was, oh man, that was like four, three or four times where he almost hit people. That was crazy. Oh, little touch. Knocks him off the road. Oh, blinkers. Oh, no. Blinkers make me nervous. Again, the first hairpin does catch people out. Too much speed. He was in front of you. Normally, you would turn. This is the guy that was on his roof. That's not where he was when I came through. Somebody hit him, and now he's spinning like a dreidel. Okay, results look pretty good from our standing. 0.2 in safety rating, that is a very large chunk, and plus 65 in the I rating change there. So we did quite well. Let's take a look at that delta. That's what this is all about. What we got here? We have 55 as our average and 54 almost on the dot. Now this is a pretty small track. I would really like to see my delta, the best drivers, their delta between their fastest lap and their average lap. Is usually between uh, be under one second and I'm almost there and now it is a very short lap so that's uh, not as good as you that the percentage of that Delta is is not as good but we had a pretty good race four is in a points and fourth place and I think if we had a little bit more time we might have even gotten a top three so let's take a look at something we don't normally take a look at so normally I don't look at this but this is the lap graph <laughs> Look at turn one. Lap one. Look at that. All of that melee that happened there. You got a guy from 5th going to 18th. Guys from 10th going to 4th. Then falling back down to 19th. This is crazy. This is what Scuba is all about. That's why it's very difficult to do quite well. So that's it. Uh, thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, throw me a like if you got a second. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.